Good morning, and welcome to worship from St. Mark's Lutheran Church in North St. Paul on this third Sunday in the Easter season. It is good to be together, and we are glad to have you with us. Our service begins this morning with confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who forgives all our sin, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit, that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit, that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. in the world 
for the health of the church, for the unity of all. For this holy house, for all who worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. Kyrie eleison, on our world and on our way. Kyrie eleison, every day. That we may live out your impassioned response, hungry and the poor. That we may live out truth and justice and grace. Let us pray to the Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. Kyrie eleison, on our world and on our way. Kyrie eleison, every day. For peace in our hearts, for peace in our homes, for friends and family. For life and for love, for our work and our play, let us pray to the Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. Kyrie eleison, on our world and on our way. Kyrie eleison, every day. For your spirit to guide, that you center our lives, the water and the word, to nourish our souls with your body and blood, let us pray to the Lord, let us pray to the Lord. Kyrie eleison, on our world and on our way, Kyrie Let us pray. O oh God, your Son makes himself known to all his disciples in the breaking of bread. Open the eyes of our faith that we may see him in his redeeming work, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first uh, scripture passage for us to reflect on today comes from the 116th Psalm. And this is uh, from the message translation I'm reading. I love God because God listened to me, listened as I begged for mercy. God listened so intently as I laid out my case. Death stared me in the face. Hell was hard on my heels. Up against it, I didn't know which way to turn. Then I called out to God for help. Please, God, I cried out. Save my life. So what can I give back to God for the blessings poured out on me? I'll lift high the cup of salvation, a toast to God. I'll pray in the name of God. I'll complete what I promised God I'd do. And I'll do it together with God's people. When they arrive at the gates of death, God welcomes those who love him. Oh God, here I am, your servant your faithful servant. Set me free for your service. I'm ready to offer the thanksgiving sacrifice and pray in the name of God. I'll complete what I promised God I'd do, and I'll do it in company with God's people, in the place of worship, in God's house, in Jerusalem, God's city. Hallelujah. I'd like to invite the children of our community to come and join me in the grace space for a time of uh, thinking about what God is up to uh, in our lives and in the world. This morning, I have a few things with me. And one of the things I was thinking about this week was there are a lot of things that I wish we could do right now. A lot of places I wish we could go, a lot of things I wish we could do. And that's really hard to kind of hold and to deal with. And so a friend of mine had mentioned that she and her family have started 
a, a wish jar, a jar that is full of notes as to what, what we've been missing and what we long to get back to. Things like maybe this one, going to school or to work. That's a big one that we lost this week, a hard one. So we can write it on here and put it in our jar. Maybe it's going out to the zoo to see the animals, to be out doing things. That's another great thing that we, we wish we could do. One thing that I'm longing for is for us to be all together here at church singing together. And so I'm going to put that in my wish jar. But I think one of the things that I long for a lot is hugging my family, the people who don't live in my house, who I can see and talk to but can't hug. These are just some of the things that maybe we are longing to do. And by putting, writing them down and putting them in a sacred space like a jar gives us an opportunity to name the, the sadness, but then also to hope for when we come out of this time of sheltering in place, we can come to this jar and see again what were the things that we most missed that we longed for, and to know that God is in the midst of these, helping us grieve the fact and the sadness of not being able to hug our families, but also to hold it in hopeful expectation that we will again someday be able to do that. And so um, let us pray. Good and gracious God, we give you thanks for the ways and opportunities that you have given us Help us when we are sad about the things that we cannot do right now. And help us to hold tight to you, knowing that you are helping us navigate the path. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. The gospel for today comes from the gospel of Luke, the 24th chapter. Now on the same day, two of them were going to the village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem, and talking with each other about all the things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and walked with them, but their eyes had been kept from recognizing him. He said to them, what are you discussing with each other while you walk? They stood still and looked sad. Then one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answered, are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place in these days? He asked them, what things? They replied, the things about Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet mighty in deed and word before God and all people, and how our chief priests and leaders handed him over to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he would be the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all that, it is now the third day since these things have taken place. Moreover, some women from our group astounded us. They were at the tomb early this morning, and when they did not find his body there, they came back and told us that they had seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but they did not see him. Then he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are and how slow, to heart, slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have declared. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and then enter into glory? Then beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them the things about himself in all of Scripture. Here ends the reading. Will you bow your heads in prayer with me? May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts, O Lord, be acceptable to you, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Over this last week, we've seen a rise around our nation, a rise in frustration and fear as the economy continues to be in shutdown mode, as we attempt to bend the curve of the COVID-19 outbreak as prost protesting the shuttering of all business and the call to liberate reverberates from the White House to Main Street. 
we can see the longing and the growing desperation for a return to normal, to regain the patterns of our daily life, to open the community back up to our pre-pandemic activity. On one level, I totally get it. I get it. In the midst of chaos and uncertainty, uncertainty, we cling to what we know or have known, to what we have understood, even if it wasn't the best thing for us. The Israelites, for example, were freed from slavery in Egypt and yet longed for the known life of being a servant because they knew what it was. But they didn't know what this wandering in the desert with, with Moses would be like. Because at least when they were held captive in, Is in Egypt, they knew what to expect. They knew how to navigate the harsh treatment with expectation and without, without the uncertainty of something more, something greater. They at least had food to eat and a place to sleep. There was direction. There was expectation without the uncertainty of something more or something greater. A long-held promise that might be coming to bear. In reality, freedom rarely comes without difficulty, without work, without sacrifice. I think we can relate to that kind of feeling. We want to go back to what we had, whether it was a job, the ability to move freely at our own whim, to touch and hold those that we love, to be with our loved ones at the hospital and nursing home, to simply do what we want when we want, without fear, without worry of a virus that is unseen and yet deadly. We want to get back to what we have known and understood, even if it means hardship, even in the midst of the spiral of the busyness that we were in, in the tangle of relationships, we'd rather go back to what we had known than to be in the uncertainty of the now, wondering what is next and having to forge a new way of navigating, a new way of being. In the gospel today, we hear how a pair of people in Jesus' entourage begin the homeward uh, homeward journey back to the life that they knew that they knew before they encountered the Messiah. They set out for Emmaus, for home, after several days of grieving Jesus' death with their community. They set out for home even after hearing that their grief need no longer be honored because the tomb where Jesus had been laid is empty. And the women who went to the tomb to prepare the body of Jesus receive word that he is not there, that he is in fact risen. It's into this complexity of emotions and this unforeseen reality, into this awe and wonder, into this worry and fear that these two followers of Christ begin their walk home, attempting to return to the life they knew and understood in order to really try and figure out all that has taken place. They seek com the comfort of home in order to discern the path forward. Now, the scriptures don't say why they chose to return home so quickly, but one could imagine that it might have to do with feelings of responsibility, responsibility of family or work, feelings of longing to hold their loved ones, or maybe needing to return to something or some place well known and understood, a place where they in fact are known and cared for in the midst of this uncertainty, a place where they could crash land in the midst of the chaos of their hearts and be cared for and loved in the midst. We get that, don't we? Right now we are becoming desperate for what was, for the, what life was like before the pandemic, before the community shut down, before this time of worshiping online, um, where we could enter into the church and sit in our pews and worship as we always have. Our children want to be in school with their classmates. Our seniors want to experience all that the spring of their senior year would have, would normally hold, prom, spring events, and graduation which now are canceled. 
We want to return to what was and what made sense to us. Because right now with the shutdown, with the sheltering in place, with the lack of embracing and being together, it's frankly for the birds. We want to go back to normal, but that isn't in the cards for us right now. And it isn't what these two disciples encountered on the road to Emmaus. As they were walking the road, they were processing all that they had witnessed, starting from the last several days of Jesus' life through his death on the cross. They were talking through how this connects with what the women declared to them that morning at the t- with the tomb being empty. They were verbally processing what their hearts had been tied up in knots about. With each step homeward, they move into a time of questioning, questioning and wondering while at the same time attempting to make sense of what has happened. Into this journey back to what was, while attempting to make sense of what happened, Jesus joins the conversation, pointing out where God has been present and active and transforming, transforming the lives of his beloved ones throughout the generations. Jesus opens their eyes to see, igniting their hearts to action, and puts words on their lips to speak so that the love of God through Jesus is revealed to all. I think God is inviting us into that same conversation in our current context. We long for what was, and we are finding ourselves possibly caught up in the cycle of what we miss about life before the pandemic which blinds us to what God is doing in this moment with us. Think about it. What have we learned about ourselves in the midst of this slower time? What is coming into our awareness about ourselves and what triggers us to act in ways that maybe are not helpful or healthy? What new routines are bearing life into our old to-do lists and our old calendars? When we return to normal life, And truly, what is normal, what will we do? Brene Brown is a social science researcher who's done done decades of work around vulnerability and connectedness. I highly recommend all of her books and work, including a wonderful TED Talk. Um, Check it out, she's fantastic. This week she quoted, was quoted um, with this conviction and invitation. This is what she said. We will not go back to normal. Normal never was. Our pre-corona existence was not normal other than that we normalized greed, inequality, exhaustion, depletion, extraction, disconnection, confusion, rage, hoarding, hate, and lack. We should not long to return, my friends. We are being given an opportunity to stitch a new garment, one that fits all of humanity and all of nature. The followers on the road to Emmaus at first may have thought that they could return to a life as normal after encountering Jesus and being witness to the power of love incarnate, participating in life being restored and the mysteries of God's divine grace and creativity bearing forth. But in reality, going back will never look the same for them, and it would never be the same. And that's what catches me this week in the midst of my longings to return to pre-corona life. No doubt I want to hug and hold those I love. I want to visit all of you, our church family and friends. I want to explore faith with our confirmation students and learn about God's love with our children's church families. But this experience is changing us. And as people of faith, we're called to open our eyes and our ears and let God's love ignite our hearts for ways to tend to the brokenness of the world through intentional acts of compassion. Now, compassion can come in many forms. Compassion for our neighbors might include trusting our local and federal officials as they study the data and make the best possible decisions for the whole. Compassion looks like wearing a mask when you are out in public. It looks like washing your hands. 
And it looks like holding tight in this moment as we discern a way forward for everyone. Now is the time for us to be still and to lean into this moment. And when I say wonder, I might not be saying bear, bearing that awe-inspiring moment, but it might just yield the key that unlocks the door to our fragile hearts and helps us work through those old triggers to tend to those wounds that, op that open up those old hurts that keep our lives in the perpetual cycle of repeat behaviors that hold us captive. I'll be the first to admit, I was fully engulfed in the normalization of busyness, and my mental well-being, my wounded past, could easily hide behind my crowded calendar and my twisted thought that tending to others would undo the hurt of my, that my heart carried from long ago. I kept moving, and so I didn't have to sit still and sit in the hurt with the default coping mechanisms that I had used to protect myself from those difficult situations, but have become less and less helpful in life. I think for many of us, including the disciples on the road to Emmaus, sitting still in the, most, in the midst of difficult emotions isn't something that we want to engage in. And yet, this just might be the time to do it, to trust that Jesus is sitting with us, is walking with us, is wondering with us as we forge a new way, a new way forward in this unexpected time. We know we can't go back and undo the past, nor can we return to, what, to life as it was, especially after encountering the risen Christ. And that's okay, because the promises of Jesus are coming to bear new life out of death, healing and hope out of despair and woundedness, peace out of our conflict and confusion. We're given a gift in this time of shutdown. We may long for what was before the pandemic, but we are also given the opportunity to stitch a new community, a new garment, to mend the wounded places in our hearts and the hearts of those around us, and to forge a new way forward where everyone has the opportunity to, to have solid ground to walk on. May God open your eyes to where compassion is needed. May Jesus walk with you as you journey through the wounds of your hearts, and may the power of the Holy Spirit guide your hands and your work and encourage you to be present to and work through all that holds your heart and mine captive this day. Thanks be to God. Amen.
let us confess together the faith we share in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Uplifted by the promised hope of healing and resurrection, we join the people of God in all times and all places in praying for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Most gracious God, as we walk an unknown path, Give us the vision to recognize Jesus as our companion on the way. Open our hearts to receive his peace and give us the energy and the passion to share his love in whatever way we can. Watch over all the people of the world who are enduring the uncertainties of this time. We pray for those who struggle with financial hardship, isolation, fear, illness, Give wisdom to our leaders and strengthen all who work to provide for our health and well-being. Lord, you never forget us, whatever our pain, distress, or sorrow. Help heal and comfort the sick, the hurt in body or mind, the discouraged, the fearful, and the dying. Watch over all who continue to serve and work for the greater good. We pray for our health care workers, our sanitation workers, grocery store workers, farmers, truckers, power plant operators, and those in military service. Give them faith and courage and good health. And bless us of this congregation, gracious God, and keep us connected to one another and to you in this time of social distancing. We look forward with great anticipation to that time when we can be together again. Until then, we rest in your promise that we are your beloved children and members together of your family of faith. With bold confidence in your love, Almighty God, we place all for whom we pray into your eternal care through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Let us pray. O God of justice and love, we give thanks to you that you illumine our way through life with the words of your Son. Give us the light we need, awaken us to the needs of others, and at the end bring all the world to your feast. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory forever. Amen gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, we pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Peace. 
My dear siblings in Christ, by your hands may love be shared, by your voice may peace be spoken, by your eyes may beauty be seen, by your ears may truth be heard, and by your life may the song of Christ be sung. Amen. <laughs>